So let's talk now about uh, the hit uh, Mary Jones play, A Night in November. It's hard to believe that it's uh, just over a year since um, actor Matt Forsyth and uh, director Matthew McElhenney joined us in the Big Show studio to tell us all about uh, their production. Definitely one of the theatre highlights last year, wasn't it? It was the most amazing piece of theatre that I've seen since I came back from London, Robin. I mean, it was just incredible. Matt Forsyth was amazing. So do watch this because he is versatile, he is natural, he is so real. Um, the different characters that he portrays in the play is incredible. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, uh, so so huge congratulations to uh, uh, the, the direction from Matthew McElhenney because it was just amazing. And of course, he cast Matt Forsyth in it. So what a great choice, Robin. Now, uh, Matt uh, should have been in uh, New York recently performing a night in November, obviously due to the COVID-19 situation. That was called off. But uh, the Irish Arts Centre are currently uh, streaming a night in November, which uh, Matt recorded in his very own dining room. So here's what happens when I caught up with actor Matt Forsyth and uh, director Matthew McElhenney earlier this week. <sighs> Good morning, Box D. How are we today? Dead on, Kath. <laughs> and what do we have today, Boxty? Fresh claims, Kenneth. Ah, oh, fresh claims. I love fresh claims. Love it, love it, love it. <sighs> Next. Yes, so if you just uh, fill there and uh, sign there. Sorry, where? There. That. Nah. Where? There. Do you see where I put that big gigantic axe? That great big black enormous axe. That great big hulk of an axe. Which I put there to make sure you say in the right place. There. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> so let's start off talking about uh, Night in November. Obviously last year here in Northern Ireland, uh, the show was such a huge hit. Uh, you must be delighted with that. Um, yeah, yeah, it went down really well uh, at the Lyric and then we went out on tour. Um, it was a fantastic response, sold out. Um, the majority of the venues in the show so yeah it was fantastic and the disappointing part about that is as well you should be in New York at this very moment in time performing the play shouldn't you yeah yeah I mean uh, it was gut-wrenching to because I've, I've never been to New to, to America uh, let alone be on a stage so I was I was really excited looking forward to it as you can expect um, but uh, you know, we're, we're all in the same boat. There's a lot of people who, who are missing shows, so uh, it's sad. But I'm hoping, with with the work we're doing with it online, that we're still drumming up a bit of support and uh, the energy of the show still still you know going, and it'll hopefully be seen again soon. So you've been uh, streaming the show uh, from your dining room, haven't you? All thanks to the Irish Arts Centre. Yes, I'm in the dining room now. Um, and I've sort of had to strip it all back uh, because the amount of equipment and props and uh, it's been pretty crazy uh, to say the least. And with the four-year-old Isla running about, uh, it's been challenging. Um, but uh, funnily enough, it's it, it went okay. It's actually went, you know, I've got the majority of the, everything that I've recorded has been the first take. Wow. Um, which has been, you know, fantastic because I haven't done it for about eight months. Um, so it just shows you how, how it sticks in your head uh, and the Irish Arts Centre have been fantastic and the response has been brilliant uh, from over there too. And I believe it's actually gone worldwide, there's people in Japan tuning in. Yeah, uh, all over the world. Mary uh, texts me after the first show the next day and she was rhyming off all these countries that it had been to. I think there was a few people translating it as it was going on live. Um, so it's just it's just crazy to think that you know, but that's you know that's the power of, the, of Night November and, and other shows of Mar Mary's like Stones in his pockets. You know, it's so transferable. And it'd be good to think there's people in Japan and places like that now picking up uh, little bits of Belfast phrases and stuff. 
Yeah, I would like, I'd be interested to see how they uh, how they translate that. <laughs> um, and I'm, it's sort of in the back of my head when I'm doing it uh, to to sort of um, slow down a bit and try to be a bit clear on certain on certain phrases that normally uh, our local public could pick up on quite quite easily. So yeah, I would, I would be interested to see um, how the translators are doing. So one of the things I would love to know: how difficult was it to learn the script? Because there's a lot of words in it. Yeah. Well, initially, yes. It. It. Uh, I, I. I'm. I'm not too bad learning lines. Learning. Learning. Um, you know, I'm pretty good at it. But the thing with this is, you're just by yourself, so you have no one to bounce off. You're not waiting on a response. You're just there by yourself. So it did take a lot more time than I than I had expected. Uh, and we only had initially three weeks to to learn. Um, what was it? What was really a, a two-hour play, an hour hour and fifty. So uh, yeah, it was um, it was challenging, especially as I say at the time we won run the boat and trying to get the the words in was yeah interesting. But uh, we got there in the end, um, and uh, yeah, and now it's probably never going to leave my head ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I said nothing because they're. Thousands of Debras married to thousands of Kenneths. And I had the balls to be the Kenneth who took on the Debra. And how can I blame her? How could I? When, when I didn't even know what to believe myself anymore. I only knew something was happening to me, but well, I didn't know how to face it. I mean, how can I look back at my whole life in one night? So, I decided to have a glass of wine with my wife and forget about that awful night in November. So what about the role of uh, Kenneth McAllister then? Is that the dream role for any actor, do you think? Uh, yeah, it's definitely the dream role. As I've said to you before, I think we were in before. It's it's the the one part I've always wanted to play. It's the one you know. It's it's sort of uh, it was the one part that I seen that I I remember going to the theater and seeing it initially and thinking that's you know it's one of the reasons why I got into acting. That's it's it's the part that I've always wanted to play. So I'm just so chuffed that you know um, I got to play him at in the Lyric Theater and and throughout Northern Ireland and I'm just. I was buzzing that we were going to New York and showing up, you know, I was able to do it again. So I'm just hoping, uh, fingers crossed, that it's, it's not the end of the road for it, you know. And because it's such an iconic character, such an iconic play, were you nervous about doing it in the beginning? Very nervous. Yeah, very nervous. Um, but, it, you know, because so many people have brought so many different uh, things to the to Kenneth Norm McAllister. Um, and I just had to focus on... on um, on my journey, on my journey with Kenneth, and and, and uh, I think we all have, yeah, uh, all the, the the different actors who have played Kenneth have brought different things to the to the to the plate, um, and um, uh, but yeah, it's still challenging because there's a lot of people who who are quite close to this and who who sort of take a bit of ownership of it. The people who have seen it, especially uh, when Dan uh, did it originally. Um, so yeah, you just you just want to do you just want to do the play justice, uh, and, and hopefully the director and uh, Matthew and, and Mary are happy and the audience has enjoyed it. The years of accepting that he must put up with my pathetic bigotry. The years of knowing that because he's a Catholic, a, an out of work Catholic, that he must accept being treated like nothing of no worth. I looked into his eyes and. I, had to get up, walk away. Excuse me, sir. Um, I, I'll get someone else to take over. I'm really sorry. I stood in the middle of my office. I watched myself working here for 15 years. 15 years of never looking in the eyes of anybody. Thousands of, of faceless people. No eyes, no souls, no feelings. Years of, of bitterness, pettiness. Humiliation just to make me kind of Norman McAllister or somebody. I want my head to spin it. I want to scream. I want to jump up on the counter with a thousand gyros and throw them at people. Here, take the money, take the money. Go and spend it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Horses, bingo, drink. Just go have a good time with me. 
So apart from uh, jumping around your living room doing a night in November, uh, what else has lockdown been like for you? Um, I've been doing lots of other stuff. I've, I've, because Michelle, my wife, who, uh, who she's still working, she works for the Ulster Orchestra, so she's still working. So I'm doing a lot of the homeschooling, uh, which is interesting because you're having to be, uh, you know, the playmate, you're having to be the teacher, and you're having to be the parent. So my head's all over the place. Um, and in and around all that, I've been making wacky videos, um, mostly taking the mick out of my wife uh, on Facebook. And, uh, and then I'm doing a bit of voiceover, some audiobook stuff as well. So, um, and another play that I did last year, um, Dog DLA Afternoon. With I loved it. I came to see it. I loved it. Yeah. yeah. So we're doing some um, sort of lockdown uh, audio uh, recordings, me and Matthew, that have been uh, getting good feedback and, and they're, they're fun as well, you know. So it's been a mixed bag. <laughs> There's been plenty going on uh, and very little rest, you know, so uh, I've been kept busy. Great stuff. Matt, as always, good to talk to you. Thank you so much for doing this and uh, let's hope we can get you to New York sometime very soon. Yeah, let's hope so. That, that, would, be, that would be fantastic and that's, that's hopefully what you know, we're hoping for, you know. Kenneth, look at this. It says, congratulations on your success. And inside the card it says, to Kenneth, well done, Pauline and Stuart. <laughs> and look, she even drew a wee golfer on the bottom. That was nice of them, wasn't it? Probably golden though, but still. <laughs> it was thoughtful, wasn't it? <laughs> I looked at my wife. I looked at her and I thought, I don't love you anymore. So, uh, Matthew, since we're all still uh, stuck in lockdown, how's lockdown been treating you? What have you been getting up to? I managed to stay pretty busy, Robin, uh, all things considered. Um, the IAC commissioned us to do this, to keep this going, so that's taken up a lot of time. I've uh, got myself, as you can probably hear, a pretty decent microphone, so I've been able to do some home recording as well. Um, so I've got a duvet set up behind the computer to help me kind of do things for uh, different... Um, broadcasts and things like that. Uh, Stephen Lard just kept writing the DLA skits, so we've been putting out like, a couple of those and uh, just trying to stay busy, really. Um, and uh, pretty successfully so far, anyway. Let's talk about uh, Night in November. And the great thing about the online thing, it is going worldwide now. I believe there's people in Japan and places like that tuning in. Yeah, all over. Well, actually, my wee brother's in Japan. I think he tuned in from there. And we people from all over America, with people from... You know, Alabama, Wisconsin. Um, we have a guy who's actually translating it into Farsi in Iran. So he tuned in from Iran. So the theater itself, they're, they're revamping it. But the theater we would have been going to, I think, is only a 90-seater. Um, the first installment went out to 6,000 people live, which was, you know, we would have filled it many, many times over. So that was great. So you must as well be delighted with how the play went in Northern Ireland last year with the lyric and on tour as well. Yeah, I was over the moon. Yeah, it was, um, I, have, I had quite high expectations for it. Um, but we, I mean, we knew it was going to be a challenge because it's a controversial play and bringing it back anytime, it always has to be done sensitively and you need to find an actor who can deliver it. And we can't we find that in Matt. And um, yeah, it was, the, the uh, response it got here was, was and phenomenal it was great people thought it was very apt as well and they didn't feel it was dated in any way and and it actually was because the themes in it are kind of universal so yeah it was great response in uh belfast and the lyric and then when it went out further field people really seemed to just love it which is great and what was it like because obviously you were keeping it in the family was was your mum always on on standby to give you advice was your dad always there giving you advice as well during the whole directing process no, actually, they were away for the whole the whole period. I was I was working on a day. We were away in Greece, um, and so it was kind of very much left up to my own devices when it came to it, you know. And, uh, and so, but that, there's a there's a certain amount of trust there, you know. That she would trust me that I know what I'm doing with the material, and uh, so yeah, it was it was very much a case of you know put their own mark on it, and, and they came they were away for the whole rehearsal period. So they didn't they were away for the opening as well. They came back couple of days after it opened in the Lyric and uh, they think it came on a Sunday matinee we all went to see it and then they loved it we were all up singing Sweet Caroline at the end and uh, went back and had a barbecue and got drunk and that was great so they really, they really enjoyed it yeah. 
So soon say your mum's Mary Jones, your dad is Ian McElhenney. Were you always destined to follow them into the business then, right from a young age? Uh, uh, yeah, well, um, I always felt there was a very strong kind of pull from that world. Um, I did try the the uh, go another direction for a while. I went to university. I did geology in Edinburgh. I went off and did uh, a snowboard instructing uh, course. Uh, I you know, tried a lot of different things, but I, I kept finding myself being pulled back into it. I mean, I guess it's one of those things that's kind of in you. So, I mean, I love the I love performing on stage and uh, and directing has been uh, great as well. I, I mean, they're both very different, but I love I love that whole side of it as well. So, I think it was always it was always being pulled back to that to that place. Yeah. And it's obviously tough uh, for actors out there, but you seem to constantly be in work, no matter being directing, acting. There obviously seems to be something happening for you. Uh, yes, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate in, in many ways. Uh, this, I mean, if it hadn't been for the Irish Arts Centre to go ahead and, and commission this, then I would be in the same boat as you know as very as a lot of others. But uh, what is great about about being given this opportunity is that actually it's kind of is. It's been a learning curve for me because I've never, I mean, I've, I've had to edit everything myself, so all the footage, so I've become a video editor now. I've been sitting, I've got, getting square eyes looking at the screen. And, um, so, yeah, it's, it's been a challenge, but, I mean, it's also, it's, it's new territory for me as well. Well, Matthew, thank you for joining us, and um, it's great to see that A Night in November is getting a worldwide audience now. Something good has come out of uh, the whole uh, COVID-19 situation. Yeah. yeah, no, it has. It's uh, it's. It's been very fortunate for us, and we're glad to get it out there to uh, you know a worldwide audience now, which is fantastic. I've driven from Jerry's to East Belfast, the street where I lived with my mother and father until they could escape the smell of poverty and people like themselves, striving for the day when they could move to a place and close their door on it all, saving for the day when they could buy Venetian blinds. So no one can look in on their lives ever again. Oh aye, they could judge their old neighbours from behind the Venetians. They could judge Jerry and his kind from the secrecy of the blind. Banks and scooters strewn over the lawn meant slovingliness. Piles and piles of jumbled up books <laughs> meant no pride or dignity in their lives. A wife that said cook your own tea <laughs> meant no self-respect. And I believed it. And there you go. That was Matt in his own dining room playing all those characters. And I felt it even more personal, Robin. I just thought it was absolutely incredible. So do watch it if you get a chance. Yep. Uh, check it out on the Irish Arts Centre website.